Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Subscribercraft Review, the second to last one ever. Spooky, just in time for Halloween. So, uh, yeah, just the, the usual disclaimer, no, submissions will never reopen, please don't submit your craft for this. We are moving on after this one and the next one. And that's the bad news. The good news is, uh, look what we have here. This is a thing with a lot of crams on it, and its existence makes me happy because it reminds me so much of the kind of vehicles I've built in the past, and just, like, the kind of things I've used in the past a lot. And uh, this is another reason this thing has made me happy, is because, uh, like pretty much all uh, of the things on the Subscribercraft review list, it has been sitting in that list gathering dust for a long time and I feel bad for taking so long to get around to it. I have multiple reasons for spacing these out as much as I have, but yeah, like we're gonna do these last two back to back just so it's done and so we're all happy and we can all move on with our lives. But in any case, this is the SMS Constantia Battlecruiser by Heismaster and I believe I've reviewed Heismaster ships before. And a third reason this thing makes me happy is because I can say definitely, Heismaster, that you have improved. You have definitely improved from the other things I've seen. So yeah, it's, uh, this is kind of a success story. Have I... wait, did I... I forgot what I mentioned already. This thing's aged remarkably well. It is, um, it's not perfect, it definitely has flaws. But all around, it's the kind of design that has lasted pretty well for Upon the Depths. It's just well armored, it's got a lot of guns, and just it like it keeps calm and it carries on. And so we're gonna I'm also gonna try and make this video more succinct than I usually am because I need to work on that. I really do need to work on not waffling so much. Uh, it's hard when uh, you don't script your videos much at all because that well, that's another story entirely. So anyway, first thing is uh, you might have noticed there's a golden eagle on the front of this. Literally a golden eagle. Which is, this is not something I'd ever stick on the front of one of my craft, but you know what? This makes it interesting. This alone makes this craft stand out a little bit, simply because, I don't know, who, who else do you know sticks birds on the front of their ship? Huh? Who do you know who does that? My guess is no one. It also has um, a number of, like, we'll start with cosmetics, because those are visual things and you notice them immediately. I incidentally also changed my fleet, co my fleet colors uh, specifically so uh, to like make this thing look less stupid because um, it used to be basically black and white this thing looked terrible and I felt like um, throwing the highest master a bone and so this kind of not quite black and steel gray um, or off gray I guess works better for me. Anyway, pointy wave breaker again this is not something I'd ever stick on one of my craft but I kind of like it. It's like I might do something similar to this, since I like putting wedges on my craft anyway. So, yeah, I, I like that. I like that. It's, uh, I'm not sure, like, are there real life ships with something like this? I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, there's that. And there's also a fully walkable uh, superstructure. So, this, we're here in the main uh, area. You could walk out. Here's uh, an AA gun just hanging out over here. Always good to have secondary guns. Two AIs as well, which is a good thing. Um, to control the separate AA, you can go down here, and you can head down here, fully walkable, random laser bits, and down here, and down here, onto the lower deck. I n almost never do this on craft, but it's the kind of thing that when other people do it, I can go, oh yeah, that's a thing you can do, that's cool, that's fun, that's interesting, because, you know, because, funny thing about, oh god, I fell into the ocean, uh, funny thing about uh, ships, uh, is that they are meant to be walked on, kind of. Like, it's, um, uh, ships you can't usually walk on in real life, um, you fall off them, and that's, well, you end up uh, where Rambot is right now, under the sea, and no one wants to be under the sea, unless they're weird. So, yeah, there's that. And, uh, so, yeah, good cosmetics uh, here and there. It's like, also, I just noticed that uh, the superstructure is kind of like a UFO, all on its own, just that kind of uh, swept back look. Just general a feeling of sleekness around this. Anyway, so onto the more practical stuff. This is actually quite a tough ship, and I appreciate that. Uh, armor and just general defensiveness and tankiness is something I've always been interested in from the depths. Like, 
I don't know. I guess I'm that kind of player. I like things that can take a lot of punishment. But, um... Yeah, so you can see there's a bit of battle damage here and there. Uh, this is quite thick armor, so here on the main hull, um, at the waterline, it's something like uh, one uh, a layer of alloy, a layer of metal, a layer of stone, metal, 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 and then you're into um, the engine compartment. More on that later. But down here a little bit, um, this is back before the armor changed, by the way. Yes, we are in beta test still. We will be for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, this is back when armor could stack up to eight layers, so this used to be more effective back in the day. It still works pretty darn well, because uh, you've got a layer of alloy, a layer of metal, a layer of um, metal again, a crosshatch, there's no... I don't know, that's an old bugbear I don't want to go over again, but like, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But yeah, here, um, here at its very thickest were alloy, metal, metal, stone, heavy armor, and stone again, so... Pairing heavy armor with stone is a pretty darn good combination still, because stone is um, very EMP resistant, so EMP damage reduction is 100 uh, per meter. So, yeah, if we go here, let's see, doesn't mention anything, doesn't reduce EMP at all, but this layer of stone just basically bleeds off EMP effect and actually redirects it away, I believe, from these heavy armor blocks, which would otherwise melt them. So that's pretty darn good defense, and you can see, or let's see here, here's a little bit of an air gap, just a teeny, tiny air gap. And here, there's just lots of stacked armor, here's a random, I think this might be just a random block missing, here and there, just lots of little compartments, here and there, here and there, and everywhere, so it's not one solid block, there is air in there. Uh, battle damage, I think the dev has patched the battle damage so it looks a little bit better. Kinda looks nice actually. But in any case, so that is, uh, that's the side armor. The uh, deck armor is similarly uh, strong because I tend to... I have found out just as much, like, learn from the HMS hood and if you understand uh, what ship that is, uh, you get a cookie. Uh, don't neglect your deck armor. Uh, because uh, you will get um, murdered from top from the top if you do that. So this is quite strong. This is a layer of alloy, which is reasonably tough and floats really well, and then a layer of metal underneath it, which floats doesn't really float much, but it is quite strong. So that's a good thing, and it just means that uh, uh, in the combat tests I've run this thing through, uh, the Constantia, that's its name. Um, I have not actually seen the deck armor breached until the thing's almost dead. And the side armor for the map, it tends to be uh, what kills it is what is like most of the uh, stuff above deck getting sheared off. So it's a good hull, it's a strong hull for the most part. And um, speaking of good strong stuff, it um, does the like uh, other things as well with regards to uh, protectiveness. So here is an ammo compartment. You'll see that the Hive Master has quite wisely fully wrapped this ammo in heavy armor. Like it's a full heavy armor wrap. By which I mean, let's turn on the UI. Is that if you go to an ammo storage and if you go in any direction, um, pretty much you will run into a heavy armor beam at some point. So because like. Uh, as I've often said, is that if you are going to protect something in heavy armor, you need to wrap it entirely, because the heavy armor will outlast everything around it, etc., etc., and as soon as there's a hole made in the weaker material, uh, the heavy armor might as well not be there. So, that is uh, that is a good armoring of a vital component, and uh, the AI compartment is very well protected. I've never seen this thing get AI dead, and I've run it on a few combat tests, actually, and uh, the reason for that is... It's got uh, the possibly the best kind of uh, AI defense you can have, which is a combination of stone and heavy armor. Like I said earlier, uh, stone is very EMP proof, and uh, heavy armor is very everything else proof. So that is a good combination to use. If an EMP jolt gets in here and just melts the heavy armor, it's not getting through the stone. And uh, you could use it either way, really. You can have it... Um, Stone backed by heavy armor or heavy armor backed by stone. So yeah, it's like um, it's a very secure AI here. Like uh, it does take a little bit of extra space, but um, it also has an air gap here, complete with a spall liner for Hess shells, which doesn't really work that well anymore because um, the way uh, shapes uh, squash heads work 
is uh, when they... Basically, the AP of the fragments they create is the average of all the uh, blocks the Shockwave has passed through. So, spore liners are kind of good, but they're not as good as they used to be. So, at least that's what I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, speaking of more defensive stuff, this thing has good radar decoys. Didn't need to do that. Why did I? Why am I doing that? Let's go and find them. I don't remember where they are. Here they are. They're over here in the front. And, um, by the way, back in the day, uh, when aim point spoofing was a thing, when your AI would pretty much exclusively aim for AI and ammo barrels, uh, sticking your ammo barrels way out on the extremities like this was a pretty good idea. Uh, now, um, it's still an okay idea. Uh, if this goes, though, it will blow up everything around it, just so you know. And, uh, so, these are radar decoys, and they're actually pretty good, uh, radar decoys. And I just learned something. You can do... If you have uh, set this to maximum lowness on the thruster, you can set thrust before locking um, uh, low in order to slow down the missile a bit. I didn't actually know that. I learned that just a second looking at that, and I just it clicked in my brain. So well done, Heist Master. You've taught me a thing. So yeah, this is a, quite a strong radar signature. Uh, 10,000 uh, signal strength each, and there is... What did I just do? I pushed a button, and there's two of them, so this thing actually uh, pulls radar guided missiles at the very least uh, quite well. So we do this, and we spawn in something that spits out radar guided missiles a lot. There is uh, the Banshee, and also I should mention since the Banshee is going to be lobbing um, uh, torpedoes and missiles at us. Huh, okay. Those things didn't get pulled at all. Huh. Are those radar guided? Huh. In any case, so uh, you'll probably also notice the lambs. It's a decent lambs as lambs go. Let's go over here. Wait. There's also a counter torpedo. Small ones hidden in the hull. So, um, I swear by these things. Small ones aren't necessarily the best idea. Simulators on them are also possibly not the best idea. But, um... Okay, there it goes. There's the decoys working. Working quite nicely. This thing has got, um... Yeah, so uh, this thing is uh, quite tanky, not only because it's got uh, decent armor, but also because uh, it's got good, decent active defenses. It's got those counter torpedoes, it's got the decoys, it's got the lambs. I'll show you the lambs. Uh, we're, this is not the last we're going to be mentioning of the lambs. That was too many buttons. Why did I do that? Let's do that again. One, two, three, four. There we go. And so, lambs is here. So, this is a continuous lambs. There are no Q switches on this, and it does the trick that I like to do, is sticking laser frequency doubles directly onto the coupler. It, in fact, could actually stick a few more on there, because why not? And that means this this lambs is not amazing. It's not, it's not super strong, but it's okay. It's decent. And um, 4,000 power, not that much to run. And it can zap uh, anything that the uh, counter missiles and counter torpedoes uh, can't get. So, it's, it is okay. It is... It is a decent lambs. More on the whole lambs thing later. And, uh, where well, I've already gone off script. Great. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so, also, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of cram cannons on this thing. There are 15 of them in five turrets. Pretty good turret arrangement. Uh, this craft isn't that long. It's about 141 meters long, but sticking uh, 15, 1800 millimeter crams inside that length. Uh, that's a pretty good um, compression, I guess I could say. And um, the Cram Tetris is actually pretty good. It's standard... Damn it. Okay. It is standard Diamond Tetris. So, if you go looking... Okay. Okay. I need to stop being so enthusiastic with that button. One, two, three, four. There we go. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. So, if you look down in here, you will see that uh, it's got that diamond pattern. So, here, it's got the diamond shape. It's got those diagonal lines of pellets running through it. This is your super basic cram tetris that just works pretty well, like, pretty much all of the time. I have uh, got multiple videos extolling the virtues of it. It's just you can't go wrong. You can't go really go wrong with this at all. It is, um, and they've got uh, a triple turret, so how big are these? How big are these turrets? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 by 11 uh, times 3 cram turrets, 
and they do pretty well. It's like 16,000 explosive damage uh, per gun, and uh, just about uh, 10,000 kinetic damage, uh, with a wee bit of AP. These are uh, uh, pen depth guns, so actually real everything guns. So it's got time for launch, it's got in inertial fuses and pen depth. So it's really, it's kind of uh, mostly HE, but a little bit of a kinetic damage in order to get the shells in there a little bit more. More on them later. And um, you'll also notice, uh, for if I just shrink the blocks in here, that uh, this uh, turret itself is armored. So it's not exactly a 100% tight squeeze in here, although, um, uh, Heist Master, you could actually. Ah, um, uh, that's why. Okay, right, right, right. A little bit of an air gap in there, perhaps to disperse fragments a bit better. Where the hell am I? Okay, so uh, this is a mostly armored turret. It's not um, completely armored. There's gaps in there, which is a bit of a bad thing, because um, uh, this is the front of the turret we're looking at, which means that um, it's most likely to get shot at. If you're going to do a partially armored turret, it's um, best to uh, keep the unarmored bits uh, towards the back and towards the bottom, because that means it's less likely to get fried. But this thing is still has... Um, uh, mostly covered in metal, which is a good thing, and just even that, even a little bit of armor, uh, does improve the survivability of the thing uh, quite a bit, I tend to find. So that's a good job. That is a good job right there. And uh, let's see. Alright, so with crams, you need stuff that can um, uh, support the crams, ideally. And over here, we've got an APS. This is. Um, this is actually a turret arrangement I'm very fond of, is just um, uh, one, two, three, main guns, uh, one, two, more main guns, and then a secondary gun just in here. And this thing's actually shrunk into the deck a little bit. Is this thing armored? Yes, yes it is. Bravo. Let's see, I didn't actually check the APS Tetris. It is okay, APS Tetris. Not amazing, but yeah, it's jammed in there, the stuff it's... Oh, goodness me, no... Yeah, that's uh, okay. It's um, okay Tetris, not great Tetris. But um, that's forgivable because APS changed yet again with the last uh, update. But in any case, this is a 200mm gun, and you, those of you who are savvy when it comes to crams can already guess where this is going. Uh, this is a smoke shell. So this thing's job is to shoot at enemy LAM systems and create a smoke cloud on top of them and uh, reducing their ability to fry uh, the cram shells that this thing lobs. And this still works very well because um, it reduces laser AP by half and most LAM systems um, only have about 2 AP to begin with because... Um, actually, I wonder, like... Um, yeah, like uh, the AP uh, penetration, the armor penetration versus armor class has recently changed in this latest uh, beta test. So, um, interesting. I wonder if that'll still work the way. But in any case, it uh, lowers the AP of the lambs, and uh, that means the lambs essentially does less damage, and means the cram shells are more likely to get through and blow the hell out of um, everything that um, it's a shooting at. So, yeah, these, these guns are strong. These are pretty strong, and uh, even if they weren't strong, there's 15 of them. Wow, the Banshee actually has, um, it's stealth black, and it's got camo now. What camo is that? I'm being distracted. Camo Knight 1. Stealth ship, not gonna help you, pally. Because the hilarious thing about so many guns is that uh, you don't need to aim as much, because the odds are better of you hitting whatever you're going for. Okay, what were we talking about? Alright, so also, uh, not amazing speed. It's only, top speed is about 16 meters per second. This is not a super fast craft, but um, it's so tough it doesn't really need to be unless it's completely outmatched by something. And uh, yeah, speaking of propellers, there is a fun thing right here. Like, uh, I f keep forgetting you can do this. Uh, this is an embedded propeller, so propellers only need about uh, 8 meters of free space behind them in order to um, Properly, what do you call it? Uh, properly uh, provide maximum thrust. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You'll notice this thing has um, uh, able to use full thrust, even though it's uh, technically blocked. But uh, if you stick something here, whoops, not enough free room behind. 
and now there's a, now there is a free room behind. So this is another thing I just I learned, or rather I was reminded that you could do this, is that you can actually embed props, especially if they're small props, like in the underside of your hull, which helps to reduce drag, and also helps to keep them safe, because this thing is actually buried, half buried in the underside of the ship, which is quite clever, and I like that. So yeah, and uh, what else, what else? It also has roll props, so um, a spoiler alert, it kind of badly needs them, but um, so long as this thing doesn't take too much damage, this thing, you know, it doesn't roll over, it stays nice and steady, means that, um, means that it can keep stable, keep shooting, it's all good. And uh, speaking of stabilization, it also has stabilizing hydrofoils. So it has uh, a few of them here, just uh, not set to anything, they're just set to um, be that um, thing. And it also has the same uh, hy same kind of hydrofoils over here at the front, because that helps um, with pitch. It does mean that if the thing rolls upside down, it is going to keep uh, sinking, but... Um, if your ship's upside down, you've probably lost already anyway. So, I think that's it for the pros. We're making good time. Alright, now on to the cons. And funny thing about this ship, a lot of the cons are directly related to the pros. So, I mentioned before that the lambs is um, okay. Not amazing. It's okay. It uh, does the job uh, well enough. Reduces the amount of fire coming in. Uh, you've got the odd weird thing in here. Uh, this is a, an entirely self-contained lamb system. This is tiny, so what you've got here, in uh, working from here, laser pump, cavity, coupler, multipurpose laser, connector, lance. Uh, the sustained damage per second of this thing is a 22. I'm gonna sneeze, oh no. No, oh, I hate it when that happens. <sighs> that sucks, but anyway, guess, uh, this might as well not be here, really. I'm not entirely sure why it's here, I guess, well, couldn't connect it to the main lamp system, I guess. But really, like, uh, I'm actually tempted to uh, try and get something like this to work at some point. Uh, just to see, like, if you just spam these, how much it works. Except that's not a super good idea, because multi-purpose lasers are kind of expensive. It is nice and uh, self-contained and redundant, though. That's nice. But, yeah, so, um... So that is, like, not a super good idea, I'd say. Um, also, speaking of uh, uh, not super good choices, uh, you'll notice this uh, main mast on the superstructure. This is actually quite uh, small uh, compared to the overall size of the craft. And yes, those of you who've watched me uh, before, I used to be infamous. Um, I still kind of am, really, for not really putting superstructures on my, on my ships. And not really putting, like, you know, proper superstructures on my ship. They either were non-existent or too small. And I learned over the last uh, two years or so that that's actually not a good idea. Superstructures do their best work when they are super. And I just remembered, I forgot to mention, that this craft uh, has shields. Well, for some reason, I didn't make a note of that. Uh, butterfly shields are back in, by the way. Gods, I'm going off script completely. So, here, my color to all. This is good shield coverage, and this actually works well, because um, it means that pretty much no matter what the shell comes in, it'll calculate uh, hitting the shield at the steepest angle, and it also acts as like rudimentary laser defense. Not super good, only reduces incoming uh, armor penetration by half, but yeah, it's like, um, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's pretty good, and it helps improve the survivability of this craft uh, uh, more already. Do, do, do. Okay, let's uh, set that to that. Black colors are all. Alright, so. Almost forgot to mention that. That's kind of important. Uh, Alright, so also, lots of exposed detection. Now, this is understandable because, um, you know, like, if you don't know how to armor detection, you're probably not going to do it. And it's understandable if you've got radars, because you can't really armor them much at all. Uh, but I swear to goodness that um, doing this with portholes, or actually, while we're here, let's test this. Can this work? We need, um, I wonder. I wonder. 
Okay, left it is blocked. Let's see here. Can ducts work? Because if ducts can work, nope, ducts uh, block that. All right. I was getting worried there for a second. I thought that would be completely broken. But in any case, um, sticking portholes uh, in front of any kind of visual detection, so like, like this visual camera or laser ray finder. I swear by this. Like seriously, guys, always do this. It makes it. It makes your craft so much harder to blind, it's not even funny. The fact that you can stack them, like, as much as you like, makes it even better. It means, like, well, good luck getting through this. There's one, two, three, four, five layers of metal, essentially. So, yeah, exposed uh, detection, not good. And also, um, lumping it all in one place, because I do not believe that this thing has detection anywhere... Else, it does not. I should probably provide you with a good example of a craft that does spread its detection out. And that is this. Alright, so... Spreading out your detection is a very good idea. So, this is the Crossbones Godly Deepwater Guard craft, and made by uh, a Wellner, who has been a, a long-time presence in the Front of the Depths community. Uh, my favorite Dutchman. Or one of my favorite Dutchmen at the very least. But in any case, you'll notice that this thing has uh, visual cameras and just sensors kind of here, there, and everywhere on this big superstructure. So there's a, let's see, there's a cameras over here, going over here, the auto cannons there for some reason, and so there's a there's a mast of some kind. Just up here is uh, stuff, a little cute mast, and here's another camera over here, and there's bearing range, coincidence range finders on, um, on all the main turrets. So basically the detection is um, all spread out uh, quite a long way, like just basically all over the ship, which means the crossbones, combined with the fact it's mostly made of wood and so is EMP proof, is um, quite hard to blind. You basically have to almost destroy or heavily damage it along its entire length in order to completely blind it and make it so it can't aim at you. Uh, over on the Constantia, all you have to do is take out uh, this mast right here, which is like high above the ship. It's right where radar guided missiles are gonna hit. And uh, that's an issue. This thing gets uh, blinded uh, way more easily than it should. Which um, really compromises its uh, her ability to be tanky. So that is a common problem with craft, and it literally took me thousands of hours to work out how to make a tanky craft that doesn't get blinded easily. So that is a that is a that is a thing. And uh, speaking of um, being crippled horribly, uh, you'll notice earlier I was praising the armor on this thing. Um, oh, there's a random metal block. Funny that. Um, with the alloy. So, uh, there's a caveat with that, and that is it's not actually that good an idea, and I have found this out the hard way many times, uh, to use alloy as the outermost, um, uh, kind of block, uh, on your ships. Alloy is best, uh, used for decks. Or as like the entire hull of something that you want to just be super light or super buoyant. And when you use it like this, uh, a lot of the um, uh, buoyancy and also like the stability of this craft is actually due to this uh, alloy uh, siding here. Which means if this uh, alloy layer gets blown off, it is going to suddenly get a lot less buoyant on one side which means it's going to roll, which means that, uh, at the very least, the roll props are going to have to work quite a bit harder, and that, like, if things go really badly, it means the craft will roll over. And speaking of rolling over, uh, down here, you also have a layer of alloy on the very bottom of the craft. This is a very, very bad idea. I have never, ever seen a ship that, like is mostly made of non-buoyant material, like metal and heavy armor, to uh, just generally perform better when you do this. Because yes, it adds buoyancy, and yes, if you have good roll props, uh, you might think, okay, that's not really a problem. If you lose engine power, 
your craft will roll over. And so, I can probably demonstrate that by deleting the roll prop. So, probably, I don't know, demonstrating things is hard. So, if I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this, uh, you'll see this craft is already rolling over. It's already starting to... Let's go here, behavior broadside. So, yeah. See, it's starting to wobble. It's starting to wobble quite a bit. Oh, yep, yep, there we go. There we go. And if we turn it off... Because remember, this thing would be moving if it was in combat. Why is that still moving? So now, this is what happens if you lose engine power, or if the roll props get blown off. Um, the thing will roll over. And because uh, the underside is actually more buoyant than top, because remember, you've got these big honking cram cannons uh, on top, they're heavy, they don't float, the thing will roll over and um, will get absolutely uh, Tyrannosaurus wrecked uh, by whatever it's fighting. So, uh, that's a bad thing. In case you're wondering, that is a bad thing. So, let's get you rolled back up, go. And, um... Speaking of other things that uh, are a problem, uh, you'll notice here that uh, this is a very tanky ship, but right on the back here you've got a whole bunch of, um, apart from those embedded props uh, in there, uh, you've got a bunch of exposed props and also exposed rudders back here. In uh, one of my combat tests with, uh, I don't know which craft was I using, um, just so you know, I was combat testing this against a number of my craft, which are roughly the same uh, cost, and in particular, uh, singing the praises of the Constantia, I was texting, testing this against the Xerxes, which is uh, similar in cost. Uh, Xerxes is around 300k, uh, the Constantia is a little bit more expensive, but not by much, and this thing spams large cluster missiles, and the Constantia was just taking it. That's how tough this is. However, like, uh, and she actually, uh, she beat the Xerxes quite handily in their first fight, and then I upgraded the Xerxes um, a little bit, and then uh, she it was a complete ruffle stomp uh, for reasons I shall go into in a hot second. So, but any case, yes, um, in that particular second fight where the Constantia lost, uh, the rudders got blown off. That's one of the reasons that um, she lost because she just kept driving away, and uh, only the rear two guns, uh, rear two guns, and the smoke gun could fire, and that like more than halved her firepower so uh, this is an issue whenever possible you've got to try and hide your rudders uh, like um, uh, within blocks without actually blocking them off and uh, or you can do what I do and just use azipods all the time and to hell with rudders because for some reason that is way more durable and they just survive a lot more easier because um, rather than being on the end of a craft they're underneath it so that tends to work quite well and um, yeah, so uh, another reason why um, uh, the Xerxes uh, won the second round is because uh, she, um, uh, I added a lot more EMP to her, basically the little cluster bomblets, um, I switched over to EMP rather than HE, and um, uh, she basically disabled all the weaponry on this thing in short order, so... Um, the turrets, the superstructure, and the decks are all vulnerable to EMP. This is the downside of using an alloy and metal hull. EMP goes straight through it, and if you're, for instance, sticking EMP vulnerable things, uh, like, I do believe the laser boobs are... Yep, the laser boobs can be fried by, uh, EMP. Uh, if you're doing that, sticking that onto a metallic deck, they are going to... Uh, get zapped and that is an issue and uh, I believe here as well This is all very yep. 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 This uh, ACB right here uh, If this particular section of deck um, gets uh, zapped by a big EMP jolt It's probably gonna go all the way down there fry the uh, ACB and also fry the missile controller because remember important thing as of most recent update uh these things can get damaged by EMP, so they can get fried by a big enough EMP jolt, and that is a problem. Stick surge protectors next to your missile controllers, people. And uh, also the cram cannons as well. Um, I always, always stick uh, surge protectors somewhere in my cram turrets now. It's actually a good idea to do that with like pretty much any kind of turret, just in case. Uh, because um, 
I tend to do what uh, the Heist Master has also done here, which is stick the local weapon controller on the turret itself, simply because it means you don't have to mess around with the uh, uh, the deck underneath it or to the sides of it, which is just really easy. Also means you can just plunk the turret down wherever. And um, if you want this local weapon controller to stay alive, and also if you want uh, the HE pellets to not get destroyed, I believe... Are these things still vulnerable to EMP? I don't think they are anymore, because that would be uh, kind of horseradish. But in any case, uh, local weapon controllers definitely are, and if you want them to survive and the turret to keep firing, and also the detection of the turret to still be working, a surge protector here and there, just in like random gaps, is a good idea. Like, you see these single blocks? Surge protectors. Never leave home without them. Seriously. But yeah, so, um, it, get this whole upper deck here. The internals, the EMP protection is great because there's a lot of stone and there's a lot of, like, there's layers of wood in there and there's heavy armor. So the really vital components, like the AI itself, is well guarded against EMP. It's just everything above the waterline is not. And that's an issue. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Alright, so, another issue is that uh, I mentioned that there's the odd bit of spaced armor. It's not uh, consistent. So, see here, there's some space, there's some space. Uh, along this, um, I guess, uh, the midsection of the ship, especially around here, around the engines, uh, there is no air gaps. This is a problem. This is very thick. This is like. How many layers? One, two, three, four, five, six layers of armor. But um, this is not a good idea because heat shells uh, have ridiculously high penetration, or they can anyway, and they can and often do go straight through this, particularly if a few blocks have been blown off here and they just, well, they just go, they just punch straight through. And uh, if you remember, this thing, if it loses engine power, it rolls over like um, to get its belly scratched. So this is potentially disastrous. This is great against explosives and great against like kinetics and stuff like that, so because it's so thick. But against a shape charge, um, a strong enough one will punch straight through this, wreck the engines, and the Constantia will roll over. And that's it. It's it. That's game. That's a checkmate, baby. So that is a major flaw right there. Let's not do that. I just realized that in my notes here, I've spelt armor as arm pour, as in you pour your arm into something. That's silly. And speaking of armor or busting thereof, I believe uh, you would remember I mentioned the pen depth uh, nature of these crams. I don't know, remember really how old uh, this craft is originally. Wait, does it actually say? Uh, nope, it doesn't actually say in what though. Oh, music hashtag. Uh, that's how things spawn in and the music starts playing. Any but, so, um, seven meters is very, very deep for a pen depth shell. Even if you do have the kinetic damage and AP to do that, that's a little bit of overkill. The number of craft that have armor that is seven meters thick, like even accounting for air gaps, that's almost none of them, really. That's gonna overpen most things. Will just be overkill, really. So yeah, that's um, it could be arguably a way to uh, deal with um, oh darn it, what's the like not bulwarks, not bulkheads, um, compartments. So like compartmentalization. I say that, but uh, this is not got super good armor penetration. 16 AP is not like you need... Um, the way the armor works these days is that you need to match uh, the armor class of a block in order to do full damage to it. And um, this is quite a way off 40. This is not going to do... Uh, those shells are not going to do full damage to metal. And like a metal beam has... Uh, 16, um, almost 1700 health, so, uh, it's probably, I don't know, I don't know the math, this thing will maybe get through 4 meters of metal at most, maybe, um, before, like, it just runs out of kinetic damage and explodes, which isn't bad, I mean, 4 meters deep, that's, that's good, that's way, that's 4 more than 0, but yeah, seven, 7 meters, too much, that's way too much, that's like... 
yeah, that's that's not going to work very well at all. And generally it doesn't. Uh, I tend to find that the shells that this thing fires, the yeah, HE does most of the work, and yeah, that's um, it does most of the work and like it doesn't really penetrate things. It uh, the HE, well, I mean the hardened pellets do increase the shells' health, so they're not completely useless, but they're not as good as they could be. I should also mention as well that um, what the heck? Okay, uh, having uh, the like what. The flash suppressors on this is like, eh, it's okay. I tend to, they tend to be hit and miss for me, flash suppressors. Even now, so... What else, what else, what else? So, also mentioned, uh, like, exposed props. Um, exposed hydrofoils as well. Um, ideally, if you want your craft to rely on hydrofoils, and to stay, like, stable thanks to hydrofoils, you shouldn't be able to see them. It's like heavy armor blocks. They're doing their best work... Uh, when you don't see them at all, so well, because mainly because hydrofoils are pathetically fragile. Look at this, health of 85 armor one. That's nothing. That is absolutely nothing. Like small flak shells will destroy that. So you really need to shield them because they do still work. Like even if they don't have direct access to the water for some reason, I don't know how that is. That is from the depths mystery logic. I don't pretend to know. And also, here and there throughout the whole craft, like you saw it in one of the cram turrets, uh, there's just random one meter, like one by one by one meter blocks. And that is inefficient for your CPU, and it's like, where is it? Where is it? There's random stuff here. I saw you somewhere. What is this? This is weird. This is very weird. This looks like uh, lots of use of the fill tool. Let's see here. Nope, that's not over there. I did see it somewhere. Like, if you can, I don't know, keep an eyeball out, you can probably see it here, there, and everywhere. Can't find them, but yeah, there's the just every is here and there. Let's go find the one I actually know. So, this guy. Admittedly, you've got a problem. Um in a turret arrangement like this, because, like, what the hell do you stick in here? Hmm. You could probably stick a surge protector in there instead, but, yeah, anyway, it's a general uh, good rule to avoid using uh, single blocks whenever possible. So, I've just looked at the time, and, um, I have actually waffled on quite a bit. And here I was, trying to be succinct. I guess I had a lot to say about this. So, overall, I like this craft. It's, um, it's nice to know that some things can survive uh, the... Constant updates, the major updates uh, that this game has had in the past. And it is ju it's just a solid cram ship, and I know I say this a lot. There's not actually that much uh, you need to do, Highest Master, in order to get this thing in, like, absolute perfect nick. Like, leave the eagle where it is. The eagle's good. The eagle's definitely good. Uh, the superstructure, you might be out of luck there. You might have to remove one of the guns in order to make it bigger. But, uh, yeah, overall, solid. Like, solid... And yeah, yeah, I like it. The HMS Constantia, everyone. I didn't mean to do that. So, yeah, that's it. This is the second to last one of the Subscribe Craft Review Series. The last one I will do soon. And then we'll be on to Weird and Wonderful and other things. And hopefully life will be weird and or wonderful heading on into the future. And it will be beautiful. So on that happy note, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you uh, want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. It's taken three bloody years or something in order to get this series so far. I'm happy. Farewell.